Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Father. What a joy it is for us to be here this evening as we have a couple of families that are here tonight with us to present their little ones for baptism. And so I turn to these families today and I ask them, what name do you give your child? And I'm asking the parents to please give me their first and middle name. Joseph Douglas and Eleanor Grace. And what do you ask of God's church for Joseph Douglas and Eleanor Grace? Wonderful. You have asked to have your children baptized, and in doing so, you are both accepting the responsibility of raising them and training them in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty as Christian parents to bring them up to keep God's commandments as Christ taught us by loving God and loving our neighbor. Do you clearly understand what you are undertaking? Wonderful. Well, then I ask the godparents, are you ready to help these parents in their duty as Christian parents to raise these children in the practice of the faith? Wonderful. Well, then Joseph Douglas and Eleanor Grace, it is with great joy that the Christian community welcomes you today. In its name, I claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of the cross that I will now trace on your forehead, and I invite your parents and godparents to do the same. Welcome, dear. Welcome, buddy. Now, we know that these parents here have presented these children for baptism, and by water and the Holy Spirit, they are to receive the gift of new life from God, who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring them up to keep the practice of the faith alive in their hearts, so that when they see the divine life which God has given them, they may keep it always burning brightly and away from the poison of sin to grow always stronger in their hearts. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, I invite you and the congregation gathered here today to renew the vows of your own baptism, to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus. For this is the faith of the church, and this is the faith in which these children are about to be baptized in. And so I invite you to please respond, I do, to each one of these questions. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. My friends, this is our faith. This is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I turn to the parents one final time, and I ask you, is it your will that Joseph Douglas and Eleanor Grace should be baptized in the faith that we have just professed with you? Wonderful. All right. Why don't we have Joseph Douglas come forward first? Oh, he's sleeping too cold water is going to wake him up. <laughs> All right, Joseph Douglas. You want to hold him over a little more? Joseph Douglas, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Eleanor Grace. She's sleeping too. Eleanor Grace, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. There's a towel for her as well there. Joseph Douglas and Eleanor Grace, God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has just freed you both from sin and given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation for just as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you always live in his holy body, sharing everlasting life. I anoint you this day as priest, prophet, and king. I anoint you this day and always as priest, prophet, and king, and princess. Joseph Douglas and Eleanor Grace, you have become a new creation in Christ, and you have clothed yourself in these white garments. See in these white garments the outward sign of your Christian dignity. With your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. So I'd like to have the godparents, uh, one of the godparents, come forward at this time take these candles out and to light them on the from the paschal candle uh, directly in front of us here Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly, for this child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. These children are to walk always as children of the light. May they keep the flame of faith alive in their hearts, for when the Lord comes, may they go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. For we know that the Lord Jesus Christ made the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak, May the Lord soon touch their ears so that they may hear his voice and may their mouth always proclaim God's goodness. For we ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to present to you the two newest Christians in the world, Joseph Douglas and Eleanor Grace. Our Lord in song. Please join in singing our opening song, number 751, The Servant Song. See 
Let us continue our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today we recognize and celebrate all who volunteer and share their time, talent, and treasure with our parish and our surrounding Fond du Lac community. We look forward to the day when we hear our Heavenly Father say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well, good afternoon once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here this afternoon as we gather together to give praise to our Lord for the opportunities that he has given to us to serve him in both word and example, the opportunities that we have to reach out to our brothers and sisters in our community right here in Fond du Lac, and right here at Holy Family. We give thanks for the volunteers of our community and the many ways in which we serve one another today. And so let us pause for a moment to prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries by first calling to mind our sins and asking for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Holy One of God. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and love of our neighbor, 
grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, Let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number 65, Be With Me, Lord. From the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace 
for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet, but you do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but you do not receive, because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. with you and with your spirit. a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee but he did not wish anyone to know about it he was teaching his disciples and telling them the Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child and placing it in their midst and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. In honor of our volunteer Sunday, I'd like to just take this opportunity to introduce our video, and so I'd like to just uh, direct your attention to our screens uh, for the next few moments as we uh, present to you our volunteer video uh, for this week. Today we honor our Holy Family volunteers. and those who volunteer in the Fond du Lac community at large and beyond. Let's hear from some of our Holy Family volunteers who will tell you how they serve our parish and what it means to them. I help volunteer for the Religious Education Program where I am a teacher's aide. I like volunteering for this because I really like working with kids and teaching them about the Catholic faith. With volunteering, I also gain a lot from the experience, too. I gain a lot of knowledge and new skills, including how to be a better leader and how to communicate with people of different ages. I also meet lots of new people that I never would have met otherwise. 
I want to begin by saying that the Holy Family Parish community is the most vibrant Catholic community I have ever been involved in. After moving to Fond du Lac in the mid-1970s, I had the opportunity to become involved with choir and ushering at Sacred Heart. And that opportunity to usher there and at all the Holy Family sites continues today. I began serving for weekday masses at Sacred Heart, at Holy Family, and St. Mary's about six years ago, including funeral services on a scheduled basis. I was afforded the opportunity to begin weekly communion services to the homebound four years ago, and that has expanded to twice monthly communion services to 15 plus or minus residents at the Meadows Senior Living Facility in Fond du Lac. I have also had the opportunity to become involved in grounds maintenance and the new prayer garden planning at the Holy Family site. I'm also working with a team on the meals serving for the St. Vincent de Paul sponsored Getting Ahead program, also the Holy Family Summer Festival, and rolling wheelchair bound residents of the Woodlands facility to and from their monthly masses. These activities have shown me that there is so much that other Holy Family community members are doing in the entire Fond du Lac community to spread the great goodness that we have in our Catholic faith. And I want to invite all out there to join in on these very worthwhile activities. Hi, I'm Sherry Sheehy. I am currently involved in Holy Family's Women's Ministry, where I have not only been a participant of our small groups, but have led them as well. In addition, I volunteer with our parish mission team and most recently became a part of our pastoral council. I volunteer at Holy Family and in our community because it's our duty and obligation to share our God-given talents to make our communities a better place for all. Volunteering isn't just beneficial to those on the receiving end. I have personally grown through my volunteering experiences and have not only become a better friend, mother, wife, and employee, but I have become a better version of myself. If you have not yet had the time or opportunity to volunteer in some way, maybe now is the time to get started. Check out our list of volunteer options online at our website. Watch the bulletins and Facebook for ideas on how to get involved. Thanks for your, uh, your attentiveness to that video. As you know, it's always a great delight and an honor to celebrate this weekend's Masses which we are using to honor uh, those who volunteer not only for Holy Family Catholic Community, but also for those who volunteer around the community of Fond du Lac at large and beyond. And so we know that within our churches and communities, if there would be relatively few successful organizations without the good and faithful service of so many people from those who teach or work with our youth and young adults to those who help with formation programs and social programs and events to those who just simply help with setting up coffee or donuts and those who would help with setting up the Eucharistic ministers, lectors and singers to those who mow our lawns at our church sites to those who tend to the flower gardens and help to maintain our facilities to those individuals who Help us to live out our Catholic social teachings by serving the less fortunate. To those who help us to volunteer in so many different ways that go beyond our own Catholic community and those partners in faith. All of those who work to volunteer in significant and life-giving ways within our parish and our community. We know that from the Catholic standpoint, we take a look at Romans chapter 12, and it's very clear that the church is described as a body with many parts, and all of us are called to do different things, each one of those parts being very important. And it's just simple. It's the way we do church. 
we recognize that God has blessed each one of us with a different skill set and that he has invited us to use those skills for the building up of the church here on earth. And so, as you saw in our video today, people who volunteer are excited to give or they're excited to serve and they want to be able to make a difference. By serving, we know that God's purpose for your life and the life of others can be fulfilled. By serving others through your volunteer efforts, you not only reflect God's glory as you serve others, but you also bring them closer to Jesus Christ as well. Holy Family is always looking for those who can help us achieve our goals. You already know that, you, that when you volunteer, you are helping others, but did you know that it will be a blessing to you as well? One of the biggest benefits people get from volunteering is the simple satisfaction of serving others and being able to make a difference in their community. It's a great feeling to know that you are cooperating in solving problems, that you're, you're working to help to improve other people's lives. You're building connections and relationships, lifelong friendships, opportunities that you've never had before. It is undeniably that we know that all of us live extremely busy lives. We know that we all have bills to pay and work to tend to. Many of you have children to raise or grandchildren to be attentive to. You have obligations to take care of, and it seems that there's never enough time in the day to accomplish everything that we need to get done. And so it's obviously very easy for us to guard the time that we have been given because we are so busy. We live hurried lives, and it seems as if we indeed, uh, our, our most precious time is the time that we have been given, and it is. We have time in limited supply, and we can't earn more of it. But we need to make sure that we're using the time that we have been given in a wise and learned manner. Consider just how sacred the time that you have been given is. It's no wonder why we resist so many new demands on it. But of course, it's important that as a Christian, we examine our life. We take a look, and we probably should take a look at the things that are most important to us. What do we do with the limited time that we have? And we reflect on the priorities that we have in our life. To know Jesus, to hear Christ, to love Christ, to trust Jesus, to obey him, to share his life in the deepest fiber of our being, and then to serve him is a very admirable goal. It is the goal of every Christian. And so helping and working with others can have a profound effect on our well-being. Volunteering makes people happy, and it increases our self-confidence because you are doing good for the sake of the other, and you're helping to build a strong community. Your role as a volunteer can also give you a sense of pride and accomplishment. The better you feel about yourself and the more likely you are to have a positive view of your life and the future goals that you lay out for yourself. Volunteering can always provide a deep sense of purpose. Older adults, especially those who have recently retired or maybe even have lost a spouse, can find new meaning and direction in their lives by helping and serving others. Whatever your age or life situation may be, volunteering can be a way of taking your mind off of your worries, reaching out to the less fortunate, and keeping yourself mentally stimulated so that you may stay physically healthy and can attest and serve those around you. It gives you an opportunity to reclaim that zeal in life. Our volunteers say that participating in this way for the church 
and the larger community gives them a greater purpose and a broader perspective on life. It allows them to focus on the larger issues and on rather than on themselves. Volunteering can also help you to make lifelong friendships. Serving others can relieve suffering, provide you with a deep sense of hope, and improve the quality of the lives of others. It can make you feel more generous as you give of your time, your talents, and your treasures. One of the best outcomes of volunteering is that you can serve by example and hopefully pass on a legacy of service to the next generation, for we all look forward to the day when we hear our Heavenly Father say, Well done, well done, my good and faithful servant. Let us all please stand then as we offer our prayers of petition to our Heavenly Father. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of Christ's church who humbly serve with wisdom and compassion, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world, for peace among nations, within communities and families, and for peace in our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In gratitude for all who are volunteers here at our parish and in our Fond du Lac community, the more adults and youth will respond to the call for service, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children of this community and those who serve and nurture them in Christ's name, that they may teach all of us how to welcome Christ in others with simplicity of heart, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are bullied or harassed, that they may find strength in Jesus, the just one, and not lose hope, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for Father Don Mersick, who died this past week, and for those remembered at this Mass, Dorothy Coleman, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and generous God, we offer you these prayers of petition, those that we have voiced aloud, those that we hold in the silence of our heart. We ask that you answer all of them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in our preparation song number 828, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Make me a channel of It is in pardoning that we are born. 
and in dying that we're born to eternal Please stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what we profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. <laughs> the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. As we take a few moments of silence here, I'd like to invite you to uh, take a look at the end of your pews. There should be some pencils and some cards there. Uh, please pass those down and uh, take a few moments to fill those out. They're volunteer cards. If you're interested in receiving more information about volunteering or 
If you're interested in volunteering yourself, if, or if you know somebody who might be interested in volunteering, please fill out those cards. And then uh, you may send them to the parish office, or you may drop them off on your way out of church today. Uh, we can take them up as well. Uh, if you see one of us, either myself or Gail Craig or any of the ushers, I'm sure would be glad to take those up as well. So please just take a few moments of time to fill those out. While you're doing that, I would like to just take a moment to also recognize the class of uh, the St. Mary's Springs Academy class of 1998 is here this evening. Uh, a number of members are here representing their class. If you would please take a moment to stand at this time. The class of 1998, a couple of you are here, I think. A few of you, excellent. None of you look old enough to be out of high school for 20 years. That's amazing. Congratulations on your milestone, and uh, we ask God's blessings upon you and your class as well. How many did you graduate with? Do you remember? No? It was a long time ago. <laughs> Very good. How about the two of you back there? Do you remember? No? About 85, Gil, you think? Yeah? That was a good number. 98 was a good year, so I was just entering high school then, so that was a good, good high school year, so congratulations to you guys and, uh, and to your class. You're getting together later on tonight. Where's the party? <laughs> Sunset? I might crash it, so <laughs> that sounds fun. Congratulations, uh, congratulations to you guys. So uh, just a quick announcement too, please pick up a bulletin today. There's a lot going on today at Holy Family, including uh, new support groups, group uh, prayer uh, and rosary opportunities, upcoming speakers, including an international speaker, Matt Frad and Tim Francis. Do not want to miss those guys. Matt Frad is an absolutely hilarious speaker, great for the family, great for uh, just everyone, a wonderful Catholic speaker. Don't want to miss him. Check out your bulletin for that information. There is also a Mass and anointing uh, this Thursday, uh, anointing of the sick. I will be having the Mass for that event on Thursday. So um, if you have elderly parents or anyone that want to be anointed, that need to be anointed, um, we have them uh, come to Mass at Sacred Heart. They sign up on a sheet. We give them the anointing of the sick, and uh, which is obviously an anointing uh, that is meant to... Uh, uh, for healing and well-being, and so uh, we give them uh, that anointing this Thursday. So details on that can be found in your bulletin as well. And so as we conclude today, though, I would like to um, invite all of our volunteers to please take a moment and stand. Uh, I do want to give a special blessing to them um, this evening. Uh, I know it's been a very special day for you. And uh, we thank you for all of your service. And uh, I know that many of you continue to give in so many different ways to Holy Family and our community and beyond that I'd like to extend a very special blessing to you this evening. Um, so let us all pray. Everlasting God, bless, strengthen, and sustain all of our parish and community volunteers that with patience and understanding they may love and care for your people and grant that together they may follow Jesus Christ offering to you their gifts and talents through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. how about a round of applause for all of our volunteers thank you And just another word of congratulations to our baptism families. Thank you very much for presenting your little ones for baptism. They were wonderful through Mass. And of course, we always welcome you here anytime you want with your little ones 
We're always glad to have you here at Mass, and so it's a great joy whenever your families join us here. So thank you so much for being here today. Let us all please stand and pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please join in our closing song, number 807, We Are Called. Thank you. It's a pleasure singing with you.